The importance of who, that is who produced the source, is easy to understand. Knowing who the individual is gives us clues about what the source is likely to say. Knowing the source is produced by a Marxist-Leninist or by a Royalist Conservative is likely to be significant. If we find ourselves thinking, well, they would say that, wouldn't they? Then the who is important. Consider this cartoon about an industrial dispute. Newspapers are big businesses and are generally hostile to organised labour. They, they will provide a different perspective to that of the trade unionists who are organising the strike. Now this cartoon uses an informal fallacy called the slippery slope. Support for the union will lead to communism later. But who is not just about the different personalities and their social divisions. Politicians, cartoonists, statesmen, journalists, poets and photographers all have different purposes when they produce the things that the past leaves behind. For example, the view we have on 19th century African imperialism will depend on whether we privilege the accounts of English missionaries like Alice Seely Harris, whose photographs of mutilated Africans helped turn the world's opinion against King Leopold's genocidal regime in the Congo, or English colonialists like Cecil Rhodes, whose fortune made from his mining exploits made him a hero right the way across the British Empire. And don't forget that the importance of who also applies to the historians whose accounts you are often expected to evaluate. As E. H. Carr said in What is History? Study the historian before you begin to study the facts. What bees has he in his bonnet? When you read a work of history, always listen out for the buzzing. If you can detect none, either you are tone deaf or your historian is a dull dog.